Shut your mouth. <laughs> this is Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. Roy Billings is suing Christopher Billings in the amount of $1,960. Mr. Billings claims his son invited him to live in his home and says he was suddenly kicked out because his son's girlfriend wanted him gone. All right. State your name, sir. My name is Roy Billings. Sir? I'm Christopher Billings. All right. And, sir, uh, you are suing... Mr. Billings, for $1,960, alleging that he kicked you out of his home. Your son kicked you out of your home? Yes, sir. All right, start with you. Unfortunately, I am here and having to take my son to court. No, you're fortunate. I'm a tenants judge. That I'm going to be fair, but I will interpret the law in a manner in which will be most fair to the tenant within the law. So, do you want to leave now? Or? <laughs> no, you sir. Just, no. You want some of this? No, Your Honor, no. Uh, well, okay, go ahead, sir. Just tell me what happened. All right, thank you, Judge. I was renting some space, a, a room for my son. Uh, I was in a comfortable situation before, raising my two younger boys. They're so, why did you move with him? Because Christopher did not appreciate the situation we were in. He didn't like the situation we were in. I was fine with it. They had a roof over their head. They were eating food. They were doing well in school. But you tell me what the situation was. The situation, Judge, they were in an RV in Georgia in the summer. How many people? Okay. Lived it there? Was, it was my father, Roy, uh -huh. and, and my two, two little brother my, my two little brothers, fifteen and sixteen, in a small R V in Georgia. Okay, that Did they team, have their own beds, or was there two to a bed? Or It's an RV, so you can imagine So what? That. I grew up in the projects. I was very happy. My mother was a very disciplined woman. She took care of me and my three brothers the best she could without a man. And no, I didn't need to be rescued. You said that they lived in a RV. And to you, that's substandard. Correct. So that's what I'm saying. That's substandard for you. Mm. Like I say, I loved where I grew up. Everybody was looking back. It was an impoverished, crime, and drug-infested neighborhood. He they loved the RV, perhaps. You all right with your RV? I, said. I was fine with it. We were and doing he mentioned well. the most important things. Their education to prepare them for a successful future. And so he's mentioned the thing. Are they within the law? They don't have problems. They're not troubled? No, they're good boys. All right. Sir. Go booze yourself. What you do? Where you live? What kind of house you got? I have a regular three-bedroom house, sir, okay? I live with my, my girlfriend, and I, now I have a two-month-old daughter, okay? And for now, I also have my two little brothers living with me still. Um, I only kicked him out. didn't kick the brothers out, okay? Well, I don't know about you kicking him out yet. He's got to tell me about that. All right, so what happened here? What was the agreement? You say there was an agreement when you moved in. There was an agreement. I would pay him $1,000 a month. The three of us moved in, and we were doing okay. It, was, it got a little crowded. It was a three-bedroom house. And every once in a while, his girlfriend, who I think kind of had it. Hey, hold on. You thought about something that was a little crowded. Well, you in an RV no bigger than this bench, and you're talking about the, a three-bedroom home he put you in was overcrowded. Well, it got a little crowded because of his girlfriend. Um, as every time now I was, you're talking about the size of his girlfriend. Well, every that time weight I has no nothing to do with it, sir. Well, I, I should throw you out of here. Do, I, do you feel offended, sir? Saying that your girlfriend is overweight and that's why they can't move around. I don't think he was saying that, but oh, <laughs> and to smaller that every time I would turn around, she had it in for me from the minute I walked in that door. She just didn't like me. She nitpicked on every little thing I did. And I try to be patient, and every once in a while, yeah, it got a little heated. And then one night, it just blew up. It blew up. And what who? She, we, her and I. You know her and I? How you gonna blow up with this man's woman? And you living in under, there, under their roof? Ain't no blow up. It's what? leaves. It was starting Ain't nothing to talk about. What, if you don't like the gift, then you give the gift back. I realized I was getting overheated. I left to cool down. Okay. Next thing I know, the next day I get this text, and I've, I've got the text here for you. You can you see, see, please. He just unceremoniously and illegally evicted me. How long after moving in did he do that? It was about eight months. Did he tell you why? 
Um, in that text, he did not tell me why. Did, you, did he tell you personally in well, any way? Do you know well, yet? I, or do you need him to tell you today? I didn't ask you whether it was in the text. I said, did he tell Because I had missed out on, on a few months' rent. No, why are you stuttering and don't want to tell him? Now you go stutter. First you tell me, oh, I, no, I have no idea. He didn't put it in the text. I didn't ask you about no text. What was the real reason? I, I ain't pay my rent. <laughs> and, and we had discussed Why did you take all that time to get to that? My son put me out because I didn't pay my rent. I was in a bad situation and I expected my son to keep me covered and look out for me like I looked out for his little snotty nose butt for the first 10 years of his life. I want you all, you parents, to tell them that Judge Mathis said, I took care of you from age 1 to 10, and you couldn't do a thing for yourself. So the last 10 years of your life, they take care of y'all. I took care of you for the first 10 years of your life, and then there no, you are. No, no, you, no, no, you, no. you did me a favor, no, and I no. agreed with this favor. I agreed. Okay, I will pay you this rent. I paid you four months rate. Rent, you knew. Judge. You knew. Judge. What, you knew that I was having some issues paying that rent. I told you I was looking what were for the a issues? job. Please, please tell me the issues, because yeah, I don't think anybody's talked about what the real issue is right now. Well, I believe maybe it's your issue. It's not my no, issue. No, it's your issue. It's your issue. Is it my Judge, issue? I we're talking about pay rent. I don't know what the issue okay, is. You know, Let me hear more from you. Honestly, there's an alcohol problem here. Okay. We're talking about like serious drinking. So when you, you were have saying, a problem with my when, you, alcohol. when you were saying, Judge, when you were saying one to ten, I took care of you. Okay, that wasn't really how I felt in my experience when I was growing up. Always with a bottle or a can or a paper bag or something like that. He calls me an alcoholic. Uh, you know. I well, you did, look like you might take a nip. I didn't now say alcoholic. I'm okay. not but saying I don't drink. I didn't say I don't alcoholic, <laughs> but you might you might take a nip or two. Maybe a little every day. A little, but it's not like I, I, it's not like I wake up in the morning and have you know. Vodka no, you at in my least head. wait to noon. I, 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 I will admittedly go out with some of my friends, and the problem, and maybe when I do, we'll maybe have a tendency spend to spend too much and won't be able to pay your rent. That's the problem. How old are you, sir? I am 59 years old. Oh, you got a long time before he has to take care of you. I said the last 10. <laughs> you 59. You intend to die before 69? I hope not. Well, then, that's hey, not your, the plan. Kid, your <laughs> kid doesn't know you anything until the last 10. And that's from 70 to 80 or 80 to 90. I think life is being stretched out now. Say 75 to 85 for sure. All right. Well, we don't want you to get ill, sir. And so please stop the excessive drinking because what you describe I believe is excessive as well. And, and I so have. I'm glad you have brought that issue up. Are you willing to get some help? Do you think you need some help? I have stopped drinking. I have not had a when, drink. Yesterday? About, no, well, it's been about three or four months. <sighs> Hold it. Do you want to start drinking? Do you want to resume drinking? I, I mean, I don't feel it's necessarily a problem, but I figured I knew Why my son. Stop? I knew my because for my son's sake. One of the biggest problems in our society is food waste. But now, also you can... We are the... Due to this situation, we've had kind of a lapse in our relationship. I want more than anything else to have a relationship with my son. He has told me on countless times my drinking was an issue. So as he kicked me out, we haven't communicated since this time. I took it upon myself. I stopped drinking. I've gotten a job. I've been working at a convenience store for about you know three months now. And I'm, I'm working on getting my life together. I want to get my life together. I want to be with my I'll boys. I'll give you a hand. I like Thank that. You. No, Appreciate no, I'm it. serious. And I want the audience. Y'all clap for him, too. He has committed to changing his life. He's three months in. You say what you want to do. You want to be a good father. And you'll do what it takes I am trying, to maintain a strong relationship with your son. Absolutely. Agree with that. Do you think he's been off for 90 days, three months? I highly doubt that, sir. All right. Well, we'll give him half the benefit of the doubt. You've been <laughs> off a month and a half. And my question to you, if he proves to you that you've been drinking, will you agree to go to AA? Will you tell him, son, I'm going to go to AA? Because you will figure you got a problem. Christopher, I will go to AA. If you feel I continue to have a problem and I have another drink, 
Christopher, I will go to AA. That better for you? You believe? You, I'm not whether you believe it is or not, are you hopeful? <laughs> I want to be hopeful. I want to believe it. I mean, this is the first time you've heard this little speech, but I've heard it many, many times, sir. I mean, it, it's Give him a not, chance, sir. It sounds like you're not clear on how long it was. But we have a commitment today in front of the world that he will not be drinking in any time in the future. You bet not. Now let's get to what is less important, and that is the eviction. It's somewhat important, but it's less important, I think, to him. And it's less important to me than your life and your health. But Thank so you, let's, Your Honor. that's why I wanted to get that out of the way. It, so tell me about the eviction. Did he give you notice? What? Tell me the circumstance. So after that fight, I left. That next day, I just get a text. I get a text saying, "Don't come back. Your your belongings are going to be out in front." Here. That's the text. Your belongings going to be out in front. I get back. I go to pick up my belongings. They're out in, the fr out in the front of the yard. It's been raining. They are ruined. I'm not suing him for, the, for all the materials, for all the possessions that, that he, he ruined, disrespectfully. You should. But I'm, what I'm suing him for is for the $1,960 for the hotel that I had nowhere else to go. He knew I had nowhere else You're to go. You're being considerate because he would absolutely be liable for your things if anything happened to them, whether they're stolen or whether the weather uh, harmed them. Sir, let me hear about this eviction. Okay, so the agreement was six months for $1,000 a month, okay? Did he, did he stay for six months? No, he stayed for eight months. Did he pay for six months? No, he paid for the first four I months. For, I paid okay? for four months, was, I approve here. Was, I just said that. I just said that. The first four months were paid. Suddenly the fifth month, oh, I don't have it. Maybe next week, maybe, maybe tomorrow, you know. The did the circumstance month. change? I don't believe they did. Okay. No, not yet, but I was working on it. Okay, okay. and the seventh month, okay, the eighth month, and all this time the drinking is happening. And like, like you said, where's the money going? It must be going somewhere, okay? And then, you know, as as far as this last drinking blow up. up. How much? You can't drink up a thousand a month, or can you? No, probably no, he not. Was taking, he was taking a blow in between. Coming. I'm totally willing to be reasonable if he was willing to offer half or even $100 or $200, whatever he could pay, but it was just zero. I told zero, you. Zero, zero. No, I told zero. you I it was, was going to pay you the rest of that rent. When I got it, when I got a job you, again, you can't pay I told even you that $1, I was going to pay the rent. $2, you now can't I even should, make I've an arrangement with me. I got proof here that I paid the first $4,000 that he I paid the He agreed to that, sir. He agreed that you paid that. So why don't you tell him what happened to the next couple of months? Well, I tell him how the circumstance changed. You convinced him. You knew I lost that job. You knew that, life jo that I lost that job. You knew I was looking for another job, and I had been looking for another job. And after you, you so you had zero dollars in your you, bank account. Well, I zero didn't dollars. have a lot in there, and I had to do some wheeling duty to kind of figure why out. Why didn't you get ever come to me and say, "Hey, could I pay half, or could I pay, you know, some some smaller amount?" You wouldn't even let me have that kind of conversation with you. No, you, you can you can make any kind of arrangement with a landlord. You can offer. I mean, landlords yeah, often. Yeah, but you're make, his son. Yeah, I'm and his son. And as he says, you created an atmosphere of. Fear of him to talk with you the way he felt he was being treated or not being treated. In other words, if you had an atmosphere of a negative vibe with him, then no, he doesn't want to come to you. If you had, if there was an atmosphere of rejection, no, he's not going to want to come to you because he fears the rejection. Nobody wants to be rejected, so they don't ask. So, like me, I don't ask my wife for half the stuff she gave me. Because she, depending on the mood, she'll say no. And I'd hurt my feelings. The problem you have today, sir, is that you illegally evicted him. Even though he doesn't have a lease, even though it's less than a year, what folks should know if they don't, that you have to give a person 30 days notice under any circumstance. If he never paid you a dime after that 30th day, you can't put him out unless you go to court. And you're here, and what you did was an illegal eviction. Any last words? The agreement was for six months, and I let him stay for eight. So, I mean, I've already 
Notice is what we're talking about today, sir. Notice. And the no failure to give him notice to prepare to leave has caused him a hotel bill of $1,960. And make sure you approach him if you see him drinking and convince him. And however, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to send y'all, uh, what's the alcohol thing? And you can actually, will you take the test? Yes, If he Honor. comes to you and say, Dad, I think you've been drinking. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, so I'm going to send y'all the breathalyzer, and anytime he want, Dad, let me holler at you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to give you this test, Dad. I want you, okay, so I, I, that's what you're going to have to do. Thank All you, rise. The plaintiff. Judge Mathis has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $1,960. Hopefully we can have a relationship after this. I'm sorry it came to this. Hopefully we can go forward. How can we have a relationship when you brought me to court? I can't believe you oh, did this to Chris, me. Chris, you're always the victim. Suing Mario Sanchez in the amount of two.